Can I have your attention for a moment? Listen. I started it, but people were, some black people were saying, oh, this is a movement. I was like, well, you know, I, w- I wasn't necessarily trying to be Harriet Tubman around here. This is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, your media hub for all things black entrepreneurship, politics, news, and events in Hampton Roads and beyond. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Black. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 60th edition of Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham. I'm so excited to share with you. Of course, our show today is sponsored by Abena Afora. They're at 5034 East Princess Anne Road, downtown Norfolk. Certainly want to invite you to check them out. Also, continue to follow us uh, on social media at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Instagram, as well as at Black Brand Biz on Facebook and Instagram. We certainly enjoy engaging with your ideas for show topics, so I want to invite you to continue to send those as well. Uh, you can post them there. You can email them to me directly at Blair, B-L-A-I-R, at blackbrand.biz. Speaking of show topics, today's show topic is by far the most requested topic in the history of Black Wall Street today. We're going to be talking about the CBD industry. We're going to be answering all your questions, clarifying any uh, misconceptions about the industry. Uh, we have a dynamic guest that is joining us for this topic, uh, none other than Mr. Kurt Anderson. He is an entrepreneur uh, who focuses on uh, empowering others to embrace entrepreneurship. He is a top producing VP with Oxygen CBD and Five Links. He works hand in hand with his wife, Tashina Anderson. They are Diamond Senior Vice Presidents with the company. Um, They're really building an empire, again, that is focused on uh, inspiring others in terms of business leadership. Kurt has literally motivated and trained thousands of entrepreneurs in 37 different states. Wow. Imagine that. Welcome to the show, Kurt. Hey, how's it going, Blair? It's good to be here. I'm a little intimidated. (laughs) 37 states. I had to think about who you were talking about when you were reading that information because you don't really think about it while you're doing it. You just got a passion to help people. And then before you know it, from one to thousands and it just grows and it's exciting it's amazing when life starts to happen and yeah you're in that moment yeah. like i'm doing this yeah yeah that's cool oh. just hearing you reading so like oh wow this is gonna be good that's you so i definitely want to hear more about your story though because that was very high level how did you get into sort of this work how did you know that this was the thing that you were meant to do can you share that with us before yeah. we go into cbd yeah i i i tried a lot all right, so mm-hmm. you know, I, I went to Norfolk State, of course, and after school, we I have went. a lot of NSU yeah, alum that come on this show. Of course, we got to represent Spartans, but um, I, I had a job as a marketing manager for Bank of America after that, and okay. I loved it. Got laid off, happens, and was looking for other things. My boss told me, "Hey, look, you might want to take a look at entrepreneurship." I never really had anybody wow. refer me to entrepreneurship. It was all go to school, get a job. Go to school, get a job. So I started a couple small businesses with a couple partners. We had a valet parking company, hmm. which wasn't making you rich, but it was a lot of cash. And you think about parking cars is good money. So then wow. from there, uh, we, I got into a nonprofit. It was really event promotion, but we had okay. a nonprofit where we would raise money by throwing parties. And we would raise money, give them to Hampton and Norfolk State University students. Awesome. All right? But that built a huge network. And then it turned it into a for-profit business, started throwing parties, and wound up even owning a restaurant and nightclub in Virginia Beach. Okay. Now, all good. Making a lot of money. I'm mm-hmm. young. I'm having fun. So that obviously good. was a part of the... That was going to happen one way or it. the other. Yeah, that was it. That was like, you know, making it to the top, as they say. Yeah. But then life got real. Um, they widened the road where my business was, so they shut me down. Mm. Um, I didn't have enough capital to start over, and I found myself really on rock bottom Mm. so i'm talking about when i say rock bottom i mean really rock bottom sleeping in my car rock bottom that's a part of the story too though taking showers at the (laughs) ymca downtown norfolk rock bottom that's real rock bottom and uh, i moved back to baltimore where i'm originally from and just to start over so i gotta do something different was introduced to this business by uh, my former middle school girlfriend who is now my wife oh phew (laughs) <laughs> that worked out. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Worked out well. Worked out well. Hadn't seen her since uh, middle school and reconnected when I was 31. And she told me about network marketing, the company called Five Links. I'm okay. Like, 
you know, I heard about it, but you know, is it real? Can people really make money? But she was winning. Mm -hmm. And she was like, look, I can show you better than I can tell you. How to do this. And seven months later, the job that I took when I first moved back home to get back on my feet, I walked away from that job. In seven months, wow. In seven months. And from there, it's been nonstop. Just never turned back. And uh, we got introduced to CBD, which we'll talk about, uh, yeah. about two and a half years ago. Uh, yeah. But it, it really has been a blessing ever since. And uh, we've made uh, some great more than money. I mean, yes, we've made a lot of money, but we've helped a lot of people become entrepreneurs, start their first business for the mm -hmm. first time, mm -hmm. show them what it's like to own their own thing, to do it, to do it well on a high level. Mm -hmm. I think that's the real blessing of what we have. So um, now I'm, I'm addicted to it. Now I'm addicted to helping people. I can't wow. stop. I can't stop. So it's, awesome. it's fun. I can see that that's, that that's real for you. Yeah. And I love that this story... So the CBD piece is going to talk about network marketing because I feel like they're equally taboo. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> you know? I'm just all over. I'm, wow. I'm all over the line. So you're like mastering both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, CBD is, when I started two and a half years ago, was really taboo. Mm -hmm. It was, is it legal? Mm -hmm. Is it, um, you know, will I, will I fail my drug test at mm -hmm. work? Will I, will I get high from it? So can you help us answer some of those fundamental questions? What is CBD? I know right. I'm messaging you because yeah. I'm not really clear either. Yeah. You know? so, so CBD, what exactly? all right, let me give you this for a Hemp-derived CBD is just that. It's derived from the hemp plant, not the marijuana plant. All right, let me put that out there for everybody. This is not marijuana, okay? Cannabis, think of it as the parent plant, and it's offspring of marijuana and hemp. We derive ours from the hemp side. When you see this commercial CBD, this is hemp-based CBD with no THC or untraceable amounts of THC. THC being the component in marijuana that gets you high, that creates that euphoria effect, right? Okay. So ours has none of that. You won't get high, but you will feel calm. You will feel uh, relaxation. You will feel pain go away. So CBD is short for cannabidiol, all right, which is an extract from the plant. All right, that's all it is. We're just using an extract from the hemp plant, and okay. it's called cannabidiol. Okay, so I think I got it. So, so tree diagram, cannabis on top. Yeah. Left side hemp, right side marijuana. Right, and we're we're on the, the left CBD side. With the CBD industry <laughs> is inside of the left side. Correct. It's, it's and the hemp. Piece. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's right there, and there is there is CBD in marijuana, uh, but. We don't derive it from that side because obviously it's not legal everywhere. Uh, okay. We don't know all the effects of what it could do, but we know where we are. And this is legal in all 50 states. Now, is that new? Yes. So in 2018, December 2018, uh, the president passed something called the Farm Bill, which made it legal in Pause. all 50 <laughs> states, right? But, uh, which was one of the good things. Uh, it was legal in a lot of states before. It was legal in probably about 46. So but hemp became legal so in the, all 50 states. being able to grow hemp became legal. Hemp was uh, was legal, but who could grow it? That's what it gotcha. is. The Farm Bill lets you grow hemp um, commercially. So now you can go out, get a license, and you can grow hemp uh, on your land now because of that bill. Man, so, okay. I mean, See? this effectively See? gave this everybody a chance to make newspaper. money. Yeah, you got to. Okay. Yep. So just, they can Google the Farm Act of 2018 yeah. or the Farm Bill of 2018. That'll kind of get them up to speed on Sounds like what that Sounds like that probably is. produced some, some millionaires and some oh, yeah. millionaires I overnight. literally got approached by a guy before I got here and said, Kurt, I know you do CBD. I got 30 acres of land. Let's, let's connect. But that's, that's, that's big. big. Yeah, that's big. That's huge. Okay, so we'll talk more about the business side of it sure. in the second segment. Just okay. so I want to whet yeah, yeah, people's yeah, yeah. appetites, Absolutely. right? Because everybody wants to know, can I grow hemp too? Oh, it's going to be on. <laughs> but let's let's get more into, you know, what's the benefit to to hemp? What is it? So I'm going to talk CBD specifically because okay. hemp is a big product. Okay, hemp is there's huge. a lot in it. Hemp is car parts are made out of hemp. Uh, buildings have hemp in their structure. This hemp is everywhere. I know there's hemp seed milk as there, well. Hemp is everywhere, right? <laughs> okay. Let's just dial us into CBD. CBD. CBD is going to help you. I call them my big four, all right? Pain, inflammation, anxiety, and stress. Those are the big ones it's going to help you with. Now, it's probably going to help you with hundreds more ailments, but think of CBD as an anti-inflammatory that works internally. It works on your joints, your bones, your muscles, whatever you can think of. CBD is going to work there. So that's where you want to, okay, if I'm pain. using CBD, mm -hmm. I got some inflammation. I got some pain. 
Lord knows we stressed out. Oh my gosh, the anxiety from right, right. my children, from my job, from whatever it is that's driving right, me crazy. Right. CBD is your answer for those and it will really help out there. Okay. Huh. So how do I know if I'm getting good quality CBD? Because one thing I've seen is that CBD is now, I mean, you can walk into Rite Aid, you can walk into these grocery stores. I mean, is CBD all is CBD everywhere. good CBD? All or CBD how is, it is of- not created equal. Right? Okay. So the good and the bad of CBD happens right here. And this is where the industry does maintain a taboo, if you will, because CBD is not regulated as it should be just yet. And it's going to be federally regulated on a high level very soon. But okay. right now, anybody can start their own CBD product. They can put CBD in a jar, put you know, make it a lotion or a cream and slap it on the gas station shelf and say, hey, CBD's for sale, and they won't get in trouble. That's the okay. problem. So what you want to check for is the CBD you're buying triple tested, or is it tested at all? All right? So CBD is uh, for you to find it. There are third-party companies will test CBD leaving the manufacturer's office. That's a manufacturing building. So that's what you want to check for. Is the CBD tested? Okay. If it doesn't have anything on a label saying it's tested, you might not want to put that in your body or on your body because you just don't know. And what don't you know is how much CBD are you getting in the dosage? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the big thing. You don't know if I'm getting, if it says 1,000 milligrams, am I getting one milligram in this dose or am I getting a hundred milligrams in this dose? Mm-hmm. And that's very dangerous. So you want to go with something that's tested so you at least know how much you're getting and you know if there's anything else besides CBD in there. Sometimes you get CBD that's been imported. You got solvents, heavy metals, all types of stuff in it that could cause a number of other problems. So you want to stay uh, connected to a CBD brand that is tested and you know I, of course I would love everybody to promote my brand but I, I care more about people's health than anything yeah. it's like you want to have a tested brand okay okay um hmm. how does it actually work inside the body I had someone trying to break this down to me and I was like man maybe I gotta be high to understand this alright so this <laughs> how does is, it work this is something that I learned two and a half years ago when I first figured out. All right? okay. So uh, your body has an endocannabinoid system. I'm not going to spell that for you right now. You'll have to watch a video. Endo. Right? Is it E-N-D-O? Yep. Okay. yep. Endocannabinoid system, which essentially you're going to understand is going to create a homeostasis between your nervous and uh, nervous system and your, your immune system. So think okay. of CBD as creating balance in your body. Mm-hmm. That's what homeostasis. it really balances. Nervous balance. and what's the other system? Immune. Immune. Okay. All right. So CBD is doing the opposite of what a, a, a over-the-counter drug or you know, like a Tylenol or anything like that is going to do. Where you take too much of it, you're going to have a problem in your liver, wherever it may be, right? Okay. But okay. CBD is creating balance throughout your body. So if you have a problem with your shoulder, it's not going to mess up your liver because you took too much. Okay. It's going to balance your full body. So what? how is it working your body? It's working through your endocannabinoid system. And it's creating balance, all right? Or homeostasis is a popular term. Gotcha. Okay. And it doesn't matter how much of it I take because... You can't overdose on CBD. Uh, you will have some effects if you take too much, all right? I want to be very transparent and clear. Yeah. I've taken more CBD than I needed to just to see what would happen if my friends took more CBD right. than so I that sold to them. To, got you. And okay. I had a good nap. <laughs> That's okay. What happens, right? That was... That was it. I I would think that the the recommended dosage was no more than two times a day. And I took it four just to see what happened. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the night, I mean, I felt like I was a little, I was tired before I should have been. All right. But that was, that was me kind of trying to overdose on it a little bit just to see what would happen. Because I give this to my, my loved ones, my Mm -hmm. family, my friends, Mm -hmm. and I don't want them to have a bad effect. So I had to figure out for me. Okay. So that's, that's where it was. How should you use it? And I'm asking that because I've seen several different kind of formulaic presentations. I've seen the oils. I've mm-hmm. seen maybe some tablets. Oh, capsules. it's all types of ways, right? So, okay. So I think every human being that's an adult should be taking CBD through the tincture or the dropper okay. under the tongue at least once a day. Hmm. Here's why. CBD is an anti-inflammatory. Most disease is tied to some form of inflammation. inflammation. Sure. So if you're taking an anti-inflammatory every day, you're essentially fighting off disease. Okay. So it's going to really help you from a preventative standpoint from fighting off disease. That's the big, that's one thing. 
So I think everybody should do that. Now, let I, me ask you that. So, yeah. we're, so we're talking about tincture. So we're talking about the oil itself. The oil, the drop. Okay. Yep. So you drop okay. it under your tongue once a day, like a, like you would take a daily vitamin. So gotcha. that's my daily vitamin by my nightstand is the tincture, right? Got it. So that that's that's where you want to go every single day. Now, the other products are going to be preference at this point, all right? Okay. So, you got coffees, teas, gummies. Oh. Uh, I have CBD breath mints. Uh, I mean, everything you can think of. And I give those out way more than I thought I had to. Yeah, <laughs> let's share <laughs> yeah, so, those on here today. Yeah, we get that. <laughs> um, but it's preference because you get CBD through those different mediums. Okay, okay. Um, but the coffees and teas are kind of like, hey, it's my regular dose there. Mm. Uh, but then there's things like cream. Where you're taking a CBD cream because you got a you got an ailment. Your your back hurts, your knee hurts, your shoulder hurts, and you're really trying to treat something that's hurting. Okay, and then we have having you know you sprays as well that are we have an instant CBD spray which takes effect in seconds. So if you sprain your ankle instead of putting ice on it, you spray CBD on it and it works better. You gotta be kidding. This is why this industry is booming because it's doing something that was not in the market before. Mm -hmm. And when you disrupt the market, that's when yeah. the business takes off. We'll yeah. talk about the business side later, right? I'm curious right? <laughs> to think about how it is that regulation is gonna change it though. So regulation I mean, is that powerful? Regulation is gonna happen at the manufacturer level. Sure. Right? Is when I go go from raw C B D to I produce it into a bottle, a jar, mm -hmm. a bag. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I give it to the consumer, the regulation will happen at the manufacturer. Luckily okay. for us, with our brand, we have a FDA regulated facility already. So we're already following FDA guidelines for other products we have in our facility. So we just keep the same guidelines, knowing if they crack down, they're not going to crack down any different than they have on the other products that we have. So that's how Hope you not. make it. Yeah. But yeah. we're ready if they are. Okay. Wow, I think that covers most of what I have here. I kind of want to hear about some success stories, though. I yeah. mean, just people that may have been dealing with crazy. Success stories to me are good. The best ones that I love are the ones where people come in there and say, this ain't going to work for me. Mm. Kurt, you, this, you know, I got this problem. I got that problem. What kind of ailments, though, specifically? So specifically? Like, um, I had a lady, I'm going to give you a quick sure. example. I had a lady just last week um, who was diagnosed with MS, mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. She was able to overcome it through changing her diet. Sure. So 14 years later, no trace of MS. Her husband, Crohn's disease, no trace of wow. Crohn's. I thought that was significant. Yeah. What you got? So several. <laughs> okay. Let's start small, right? All right. So, so the All first right. one, I remember I was doing, I was giving the samples away. It was a friend of the family. Um, she was very, she she loved me, but said, Kurt, this ain't going to work for me. You don't know me. You don't know me like this. Okay. I'm telling you. Didn't I gave her yet. some cream. Her thumb was swollen out about almost about a half inch. She had arthritis. Okay. She hmm. said, I'm putting this on it. While she's putting the cream on, she's still telling me, you know, I don't know why I'm even doing this because it's not going to work. Five, six minutes later, she screams out in the middle of this event that I'm doing. Oh, my gosh. Look at my hand. It worked. 20 wow. years having this problem and nothing's working. This worked. And I'm sitting there like, wow. I wasn't even expecting that. And like, wow. that's what blew me away is I was like, maybe it won't work. I know. But then when she yelled out like that, you realize, okay, mm. there is a pain blocker and an anti-inflammatory working together within CBD and it helped her, right? So then you have uh, people who are taking this for uh, because of migraine headaches. That's another one. We have a spray. You can spray right on the back of your neck or rub it on your temples. And your migraine headache that you probably been medically diagnosed with this, what mm -hmm, happened for mm -hmm. years, goes away in seconds. Wow. That's a life-changing a life changing moment right there. Yeah. That's life changing. You're never going to live life the same way. Wow. One of some of the things that are more popular with CBD helping are seizures. Okay. And people who've been uh, epileptic for years taking CBD and their seizures stop right away. We're talking about you know, on the first or second or third use, you're seeing the seizures stop. Um, I think one thing that I'm excited about is how many people come back to me and say, hey, the doctor is saying that my my cancer has stopped growing because of CBD, right? Or Whoa. my cancer stopped growing. They don't say it's because of CBD, but they're taking CBD. That's the only thing they changed. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's because of CBD. I want to be very yeah, clear on yeah, that. Yeah. I'm not saying, hey, well, I got the cure to cancer. Don't, right. don't, I did not say that. But a lot of people come up to me who have cancer. Mm -hmm. They're doing that. Um, and so you get all that. But I'm going to tell you right at home for me, yeah. my six-year-old has growing pains. He jumps into my bed. Typically, he wakes up my wife first. 
God bless, God love that. <laughs> but he wakes us up in the middle of the night saying, my legs are hurting because he's got mm-hmm. growing pains. And he says, Daddy, can you give me the white stuff? It's just a cream, mm-hmm. right? Before mm-hmm. he can knew the name. But now he's six. It started when he was four. But now he's six. He knows the name of it. And we rub it on and faster than ibuprofen or any type of child, uh, wow. you know, drug that you can give him. Mm-hmm. We give him the cream and it goes away and he has a perfect night's sleep. So pain, inflammation, you think you name it, it, CBD is really working for so many people. And right now, I'm at the point where I'm never surprised on what CBD does for somebody because I firmly believe that there are more uses still being discovered today on what CBD can do. Mm. Balancing the nervous and immune systems. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that has infinite implications in the body. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We've got about a minute and a half before we go to break. I want you to cool. tell people, how can they... so. I've never used CBD. Mm -hmm. I want to get my hands on some. I'm trusting you. How can I get my hands on what it is that you supply? So if you just want to get your hands on what I supply, you just go to uh, go to my Instagram page. All right. At Ultra Kurt. All right. And I used to own a restaurant nightclub called the Ultra Lounge. So I got the name Ultra Kurt, C-U-R-T. Okay. And uh, just go to my uh, Instagram page. My link is in the bio. Just click the link in the bio. And I put a discount code up there before I came on the show. So anybody who listens to this show, (laughs) you're going to get a hookup, right? So you can get a discount uh, right in my Instagram bio. Just go to Ultra Kurt um, and do that. Follow me, of course. You'll see a lot of information about uh, CBD there. But you can go, and it'll link you direct to my website. You can kind of peruse through to figure out what's good for you. Every product has a description so you know exactly what you're getting. Um, And the tests are there. Testimonials from people who use it are all there. So all that's there where you can find that. Mm, fantastic. I'm excited about the arthritis piece. Yeah. I think I'm going to gift that to some relatives. This, oh, Christmas this is going to be a, a pain-free Christmas for a lot exactly. of people. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. All right, Kurt. At Ultra Kurt on Instagram. You said there's a link there in the bio, a discount code for yeah. us. I'll yeah. make sure I share that at the very end of the show as well. Perfect. So when we come back, um, we'll be talking more about the business side. I know, again, that's what people oh, yeah. want to know. Can oh, yeah, they yeah. get into this industry? Y'all hear that? This um, is the time. We are going to show people how they can get to this industry right here on the show. So I'm excited. Yes, as am I. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. All right. When the conversation is good and the friends are even better, you'll find a wine that brings it all together. Shoe Crazy Wine. Remember that name. Shoe Crazy Wine. Available at Costco, Kroger, and these other fine retailers. May the Lord add a blessing to the mixing of the word. Word, You've been rocking to the revolutionary sounds of Positive Vibes Entertainment. Positive Vibes Entertainment is available for your wedding reception, family reunion, praise party, or any other event. Our website is www.positivevibes.net. Check it out. We hope that you will be blessed, stay blessed, and be a blessing. Blessing, 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 blessing. And now, more Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham on Smooth 88.1 WHOV. Welcome back. Number 60 is in full effect. Uh, It's time for this week's edition of Hashtag Add This to the List. Special guest comedian Allison Moore. She is a native of Hampton who travels the world uh, with comedy. So exciting. She's open for such folks as Sinbad, who's one of my personal favorites. Mine too. (laughs) She not only does comedy for entertainment, but Allison also uses her clean, professional, relatable, and witty comedy even as a keynote speaker. Wow. So much to you, Allison. I'm blessed to have you on the show today. How are you? you called me. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. You just, yeah, you bring a smile to the room. I appreciate it. $7,000 for my orthodontist. See, that'll do it. Mm. Wow. So how did you get into comedy? How did you know it was your thing? I ask every entrepreneur this question. People told me. I didn't. I've always you been had funny. That. Yeah, I was like, I didn't connect the dots. I've always been comfortable talking in front of people. Mm-hmm. I never would have considered that I was a comedian. I think that's most of the battle. Stage presence and being mm-hmm. willing to talk about things that other people are not. That's what's funny. So people would tell me all the time, you should be a comedian. But I was so locked up in my own self-esteem, all my stuff. Like, what you trying to say? I'm not your caricature. I am uh, smart. I am scared. I know I'm not going to be scared. <laughs> so then eventually someone was like, wow. you could be getting paid, girl. And I was like, for real. <laughs> so five years later, here we are. Wow. It took me until I was 30. I was 30 before I went to my first comedy club, comedy show. 30. Wow. And now you've got all this full-time 
background in education. You probably thought you were going to do a hundred other things Absolutely, first. Absolutely, yeah. I was all about, I mean, I wasn't raised in an entrepreneurial community, culture, mm-hmm. you know, none of that. Mm-hmm. Even though looking back now, my mother had some artistic pieces of components to her, but the mm-hmm. business side was not there. So it was mm-hmm. like a lot of creative hobbies, Okay. Right? okay. And so my track was human resources. I got a bachelor's degree from Norfolk State in business. I got a master's from George Washington in HR. So I was just trying to be a director and retire. That was mm-hmm. what I was thinking. But the things that I was good at were the trainings, mm-hmm. were the speaking in moments where other people felt it was uncomfortable, race, diversity. At that time, I was the young black girl that came, graduated from college. So they would send me in to talk to the black employees. Again, people would see, sometimes people see what's in you that you don't see what's in yourself. And I try to encourage like all yeah. my people, whatever people are asking you to do, Lean into it that you're good at, that you like doing, because there people would ask me to do the thing that they didn't want to do. I didn't know the public speaking, being in front of a audience. I didn't realize that that was something that made everybody super scared. I'm like, oh, pick me. <laughs> I like the spotlight. <laughs> a lot of people owe me some checks. True. We'll get those later. Well, yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Allison. So Allison is actually joining us for Black Diamond Weekend. We're I so excited wait. to have Allison oh. hosting the Black Wall Street Extravaganza. On Saturday. We're going to have fun. But I'm yeah. going to be there looking cute on Friday night, though. Let's all do that. I'm, I'm like, you know what? I'm pulling up. Encouraging our listeners. Yes. Friday night gotta come out. is a cute night. The mm-hmm. Diamonds in the Sky VIP party. Mm-hmm. Like, it's after work, yes. But really, we want you to go home Ain't and Anybody want to work first. on Friday anyway, Blake? True. Do they work on Black Friday? And if they do physically, they're not. I mean, they're there. They're there, but they're not there. here with me. You know, I just learned there's a name for that. What? Presenteeism. When you show up to work, but you're not oh, really wow. there. Oh, really? We talked about that last week. Yeah. I, the, I got a name for it, too. Milk in the Clock. That'll, yeah. <clears throat> Big facts. <laughs> Black <laughs> Friday, no one's at work, so there's no reason not to come to Diamonds in the Sky looking cute and then go to bed and then get up early for Saturday. Where the real magic is happening. <sighs> the real magic. It's going to be so much fun. I'm excited. I'm excited about seeing all that Black excellence. I'm excited about having a space where us Black minority entrepreneurs can come out and like people really are asking me so I'm just supposed to buy something because because they black on yes Mm -hmm. just do it just for that reason yes absolutely right there and if like we can start with that and we're gonna fix our businesses and stuff too Mm -hmm. we're gonna make sure we get it all together but for now just support just because and people like well no that don't uh, uh, uh." let me tell you why Mm. because the people that are starting these nonprofits and doing something for your black kids Mm. are black and they're black business owners that need money Wow. These white businesses, they got their own priorities and their mm-hmm. own, you know, whatever. And and it's no shade because I got a lot of white fans and followers and some and support. Sponsors. Some mm-hmm. creepy ones, too, that I'm like, <laughs> kick rocks. <laughs> but then, you know, I got some some allies. But our communities are affected by our black-owned business owners and leaders and people that True. are financially able to create these other little funnels and programs and resources that we benefit from. So, yes, wholeheartedly go because they're black. And then people talk about the customer service or, you know, well, that, well they don't have as many opportunities staff. to get better. <laughs> right. They don't yeah. have the staff. Some yeah. people, been, they got a 400-year lead on mm-hmm. us. You know, when I got into the game recently, it is recent. But if you don't give me the chance to learn and grow and fail, repeat, then I'm not going to be competitive or I'm not going to be able to thrive or, or, or reach the expectation that you've set unreasonably for your girl. Yeah. Let me stick to these jokes. People are like, oh, when I get too serious, they're like, but ain't she the comedian? But all of this comes <laughs> together, though. Like, I appreciate you going there. Well, yeah. And there's some things I probably haven't told you yet about oh. the expo, because I know I'm supposed to give you a rundown oh, so no, you know what you're supposed you, to say and all that. But 65 vendors. 65. So we're talking about... And me, right? 66 vendors. You, you, you have to take two. But what we wanted to make sure of this year... Because whenever there's a vending opportunity, you typically have, you know, you got your people that sell clothes and, mm-hmm. and glasses and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. homemade body bombs, and they sign up immediately. Right. But you may not have your dermatologist and mm-hmm. your dentist and your pediatrician. They don't typically, right. that's not necessarily how they right. do business development. Right. So my challenge was, okay, I'm going to reach out to these folks. Right. Because we need to know they exist. Yeah. So we've got a really diverse 
set of vendors. That's exciting. I'm so exciting. I have a um I have a black eye doctor. And so people will mm-hmm. say, you know what? Well, I, I want to go to a black eye doctor. So you really <laughs> I'm like, well, me too. <laughs> right. So you're really putting them in this space and these professionals and where people can find them. Like there are people who do and, and even I just Wine, black people. cigars. Yes. Got you got the wine attorney. lady coming? Yes. Oh. She's worked with us since day one. Oh. Gwen Hurt, she crazy wine. She's been on the show. Hurt. My mother-in-law's name yeah. is Gwen Hurt. Really? Mm-hmm. It, it and it's hurt. not Gwen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, my, my name is Allison Moore. I share the same name with a famous porn star. Wow. Oh, that's a that. white lady, y'all. It ain't me. <laughs> Girl, for real. She's a, an award-winning porn star. And you know what? Black Please, this coffee like business I'm starting. Honey, they got a whole thing. They got a whole award situation. I wouldn't know. <laughs> and when I say that in the audience is you can see some men pulling out their phones. They're like, they're going to fact check. How you going to fact know. check this? I done said 17 other things you ain't fact check. Don't see? play with me. Can we hear about Black Please? Yes. So Black Please is a brand new coffee company. Thank you. Don't know very many black-owned coffee companies. Thank you. So what happened was because I'm a clean comedian... And I would do a lot of, with the corporate background, I would do a lot of corporate events. I started mm-hmm. to get booked. And, and that's where you and I, our paths yeah. across. Yeah, grow yourselves. People, yes, Erica that was Spencer. the beginning. And then we City saw Hampton. each other at, um, shout out Erica Spencer and City Hampton. CBMS. CBMS, SDC. Carolina, DLC. Virginia, Minority Supplier Diversity Council, also sponsored by Ferguson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I would, people would book me in the mornings. Like, you know, we, well, we want you because you're funny, girl. You can wake everybody up. Again, I got this feedback. I started to lean into it. In fact, started reaching out to organizations saying, pick me in the morning mm-hmm. because people, you can laugh, wake them up, and then you can come and share whatever your content is. Yeah. But I started to say, oh, y'all going to use me because I can wake everybody up. So I'm like, yeah. what, the coffee around here? Uh-huh. Then people are like, Haha. I'm like, I'm the conference's coffee. So that became my tag, comedian Allison Moore, your conference's coffee. And then I would just say, wow. so y'all must like y'all coffee black. Mm-hmm. Look at y'all, black, please. Black, please. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start a business. So coffee for me was my inspiration. Anytime I'm going through, like, I got it. Let me get this cup of coffee. I got stuff to do today. Let's go. And I'm naturally inspiring anyway. So I just felt like that all of those pieces of me will blend. See what I did there? Mm -hmm. (laughs) See what I did there? (laughs) Would blend together into, you know, something special. But what happened... And what I'm figuring out now is as soon as I... Coffee is a very expensive, sophisticated product. You just can't jump out there the way my pocket's set up. I don't have even just to start with the market research. Mm-hmm. So I said, but I do have a platform. I do have an audience of following. Mm-hmm. I am in front of a live audience organically, two and 300 people a week. That's mm-hmm. not common for everybody. Mm-hmm. So I can start getting this brand awareness. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I started with hoodies and mugs. It's the easiest thing to, you know, put your logo on or... And black people lost their minds. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Hold on, this let's is a pause, movement. Let's pause. Did y'all just hear what she said? She's starting a coffee company, but the first thing she sold was were hoodies. coffee mugs and hoodies. What? Mm-hmm. That's innovative. Well, thank you. That's called lean startup. Thank you. That's called what's that called? There's another name. That's called it's a smart way to get money. Yeah. You don't have the yeah. coffee. Crowd. Yes, funding. crowdfunding, brand awareness. Yeah, so at the same time. I, I started it, but people were, some black people were saying, oh, this is a movement. I was like, well, you know, I, w- I wasn't necessarily trying to be Harriet Tubman around here. I just thought, I- and then on the same side, my white fans and followers, a lot of them began to feel alienated. Mm. Well, what is, well, why, well, maybe you put, well, why don't you just make it so that we know that it's coffee, you know? So then I got into this internal place where I'm like, what y'all trying to say? And being pulled left and right and trying to figure out. Because another piece to me is I really wanted to do the coffee as a subscription service to employers. Boom. Because I feel like that coffee would be a great conduit for engagement. It if is. You have, if you already are paying for coffee in your, bu- your business anyway for your employees to be able to go in the break room and get coffee... Then we had this coffee with these cups or these messages that are humorous, inspiring, mm. communicating to the employee. We're glad that you're here. Every employer that's can't innovative. give. That's innovative. That's what I was trying. That's innovative. But the pushback made some people say, well, white people are not going to let you come into their company with black, please, because it's more of, you know, with the, with the racial sensitivity and all that we have going on. It, I mean, it's been a lot um, of things for me to make decisions. You know what, Allison? Figuring it out. 
talk, speaking to my life. Please. This Come on. is a great place for us to stop. Mm. Okay. I mean, right That's now you have just like given them a taste of what I know you're going to do next Saturday at the Western Virginia Beach Town Center. I love it. <laughs> From 9 to 3. And no, then you're coming joking, back. right? You ain't got me speaking about it. Okay. okay. I mean, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about when you I'm have do whatever microphone. you want. I'm going to do it with, with them people coming to get these jokes. We're going to have a good time. I just need to reiterate while as you're, as you're exiting stage right that this is a free event. Oh my gosh, this is so this free. This is group economics. We got... We first of all, our organization decided we're going to support one another, right? And as a result, we have the support of the cities, right? Virginia Beach, Hampton, Newport News, Norfolk, right? right? They're paying, yes, so that we can have a larger platform to support each other. Which is what we say all the time: they don't do nothing for us. We don't have but nothing. But they're doing it because we're part of the tax base too. So they're giving us a few of our coins back, mm-hmm. right? Nice to do this. So what we're asking of you guys is come here, Allison. Y'all gotta come. November 30th. We're gonna have a good time. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna laugh. From 9 to 3. There's yes. gonna be giveaways. Oh. It's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna go through all the giveaways first real quick before I handle <laughs> the people. Just, you know. See how you do. Like to test the product. I can't wait, Allison. Me either. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Yeah. It was just like being who you are. I know it was divine intervention that we met. I know. Me too. And like then it. we got a plan to have you back too. Yes. Let's do that. I'm here. I'm in Hampton. Okay. Now I'm a Spartan, but I love Hamptonians. That's fine. I was raised down the street, so you know. <laughs> I grew up in Hampton. Love her. Appreciate y'all. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank okay. you. I got to talk about this, too, because this is actually the only other Black Diamond Weekend event that is not completely sold out. It is our... Black Wall Street Business Boot Camp. Um, what an awesome platform. So we have nine different groups of speakers coming to help you with every aspect of your business. So we actually have Ron Lewis, who is uh, one of our guest hosts. You all may have remember him from when I was on my break. Um, Ron Lewis is doing a piece called Is My Business Ready to Do Business? Um, So you can get a ticket and come spend the entire day with us at the Westin. Even if you just want to focus on education, we have something for you. We've got a a branding piece that's happening that day. We have a supplier diversity um, panel with Ferguson and Cox Communications. So maybe maybe you've got a product or something, um, maybe in the technology space that you would like to be able to sell to a billion dollar company like Ferguson. I think actually $21 billion company. They are uh, sponsoring our, our lunch for the boot camp. Um, we've got a master class going on with Dr. George Frazier. Um, those that have been listening since the beginning, Dr. George Frazier, a powerhouse speaker, international best-selling author and speaker. Um, he actually hosts the Power Networking Conference every year, which is listed on Forbes top five uh, conferences for all entrepreneurs. So um, you definitely don't want to miss the opportunity to hear Dr. George Frazier. So just want to encourage you, if you don't yet have a ticket to Black Diamond Weekend, you want to get some education, you know we bring awesome content, right? Because you've been listening to the show. You can still get a ticket, blackdiamondweekendva.com. Um, or you can go directly to our Eventbrite page, blackdiamondweekend2019.eventbrite.com. Um, there are tickets there for the Black Wall Street Extravaganza and Boot Camp. So we're certainly looking forward to seeing you next weekend. Again, it's um, November 29th, November 30th, December 1st at the Western Virginia Beach Town Center. We'll be there all weekend. Um, so we're back now with Mr. Kurt Anderson, we're our back. resident CBD network marketing expert. Love and business expert. Yes. We got that figured out too. That's something yeah. else we can talk about a Listen, whole nother show. I'm ready for that. That's, <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's the Love one I'm and ready business. Because it's, um, it is special and it's rare mm-hmm. and it takes some work, mm-hmm. but there is a blueprint. Mm-hmm. And it's a real blueprint, some things that you have to do to work a business with your spouse, and not just your spouse, but the person you love. Are you going to write that book? I, I really think we need to. And mm-hmm. we talked about this before. And I think that we're ready for it. Especially um, in the network marketing space. That would do huge. Yeah, in the network marketing space. I'm but just you, in general, I mean, you know. I'm going to tell you, we're in a lot of other spaces. People know us for the network marketing space. Yeah. 
But we do a lot of motivational speaking mm -hmm. um, because people are comfortable with who we are. They invite mm -hmm. us to other places to come speak. Yeah. And a lot of times it's, hey, can y'all just tell me? Sometimes I'm to, I didn't mean to box you in when I said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But I know a lot of way. power yeah. couples in network marketing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It. And a lot of, it, when I, I definitely want to talk in about the network marketing space because it's something where I feel like it got a bad rap for a good, some good reasons, some real reasons. Yeah. But everybody ain't bad. And yeah. it's a great way to make money. But this power couple, this loving business model is something that is doing more than just making money. Is bringing families together. Mm -hmm. We are in the house when our children get home. We are able to educate them on more than just the stuff they got from school, their mm -hmm. finances, mm -hmm. their relationships, mm -hmm. uh, their health. We're there for that every single moment, almost to a point where they're getting sick of us. But mm -hmm. it's great mm -hmm. because they're your parents are there to help mold and guide you. But more than that, we get to work together every day. And I tell people we have flight miles together. I said people have been together for 25 years. But they gone at their job for 12 hours a day and they miss each other. We are here working together Half every single lives. day. Wow. We yeah. sitting right there and we have two different offices just so we don't get in each other's nerves. But, yeah. but you know, we are, we are literally just a holler away from each other all day long, if not next to each other. So it's a beautiful thing. I'm going to challenge y'all to have that book written by the end of 2020. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like. I hope my wife is listening to this. Hold you guys book. accountable. Can somebody at Tashina on this Facebook Live. Love and business. <laughs> because the, the blueprint. Love and business. The blueprint. I'm gonna give you a. Um, what do you call it? A when you, signed yeah, copy. Yeah, signed copy. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a forward in the book. So, so there thanks it to is. Blair for inspiring this book that has inspired millions. Wow. So, well, if you're just tuning in, uh, this is Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham. We are talking with Kurt Anderson. We're going to segue back to our conversation about the CBD industry. Okay. Um, and again, this has been our most requested show. Wow. Um, since we started, people were just saying, you know, you got to do something with CBD. You got to. Yeah. Um, how do you get into this business? I mean, I've, I'll tell you that I've even asked at the state level where I know these licenses are issued mm -hmm. for us to have an expert to come on to share this information, right? Because yeah. people are lost. And, and if you Google it, someone's trying to charge you $1,000 just for the next person to charge you $500. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah, because it's a cloudy space. It's, it's really cloudy because I don't red tape. So Can you help it's, it's a, it's a few demystify? Things. Yeah, let me demystify. So number one, a lot of people are looking to get into the marijuana business, all right? So we got to, and so they go looking for marijuana stuff and that's where they're having trouble because marijuana is not fully legal in Virginia. So let's so not even... Can't even do it, right? No, no marijuana. medicinal marijuana that's been granted to like five different places, but that's it. It's See, and, and that's what we've heard. Right. You so got the five, like five but or there's only going to be 20 licenses. But or, there'll be or, more eventually. But right now, they're, they're trying to stair-step it and make sure yeah, we, so they we can do regulate this right. Those. right okay, like that. so that, that's not that bad. Then. So it's not impossible. It's not yeah. happening now, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Then you have growing hemp. You can grow hemp. You can get a license to grow hemp, right? So you can do that. You have the land. Uh, you can definitely do that. So you have to get a license to grow hemp? Yeah, you need to get a license to grow anything, right? Grow, grow anything you're going to sell commercially, right? So yes. Yeah. Right, okay. All right. Makes sense. So, yeah, you so you're going to get a license to grow hemp so that you can sell it. So grow right. hemp for commercial use. Exactly. Okay. Now, here's where it gets fun. Well, let's, let's, yeah. let's look. We, we infants in the game. Okay. A license to grow hemp for commercial use. Sure. Is that something like I fill it out online and it's done? Or do I have to go stand in line and meet people? And how, yeah, you how rigorous to, is even that? Yeah, part? you got to make sure you got the right the right area, the right facility. You're, you're outsourcing the right stuff. So yeah. they're going to come out and take yeah, you're gonna, gonna, gonna a quality check and everything. Okay. There, okay. So that's involved. All right. Just making a note. Yeah, that's one thing. Okay. So you have that and you can start producing it. I do know people who have, are growing hemp now. So that's not impossible. All right? In Virginia. There, there are people in Virginia <laughs> and in North Carolina, uh, more in North Carolina, but they're definitely coming in, in Virginia. So it's happening. You got the okay. land. It's not impossible to do that. Okay. 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 So that's one thing. Um, but there is the everyday person. I think that my, my connection is going to be to the everyday person. How can Blair who doesn't own 100 acres of land. I don't know if you do or not, but I'm assuming that most people don't. If, right. she, if she doesn't own 100 <laughs> acres of land, how can she start a CBD business? How can she be profitable on this industry that is going 
to from from under one billion to twenty two billion dollars over the next two years. So you're talking about starting the CBD business without growing hemp. Without growing hemp. So we're gonna bypass all of that yeah, regulatory stuff. Exactly. And just start a CBD because business. Because people are have coffee companies that don't grow the coffee. Okay. All right. You definitely can maximize in the industry without growing it. Right. Sure. Because it's one place to be the the, the grower, the manufacturer. But somebody's got to sell it mm -hmm. to the consumer. And there's no licensure necessary for distribution. There's no it. license necessary for it. Now, you're going to need a license with whatever company that you work with if you go through a, a company like what I do. Mm -hmm. So you just have to buy into the company, all right? So you okay. buy into the company. And but, that gets you. But that gets you CBD as well. So you buy a license and you get product as well, okay. okay? Okay. So now you're not just buying a license. You're buying the license. And actually what we do is we throw in the license for free and just give you uh, CBD almost twice as much what you pay for to help you get your business off the ground. Okay. So to make a simple question, the way that you start is you get with someone like myself or someone who's distributing CBD and we will help you get a license. It takes minutes to start okay. selling so CBD. Okay, so I don't have to pass a test. No, there's no <laughs> test you need to take. Okay. Uh, I do know people who are licensed in other states, but you don't have to be. It takes minutes. It takes, uh, I don't know, I don't want to quote any prices, but it takes some money, a little bit of money, all right? And it takes minutes. Those are the things that you, you need to know. Get back with the person. It's definitely something that every American citizen can afford. I'll put it like that, okay? Okay. All right, we priced it that way. So now we got that out the way. The next thing you do is you'll get CBD ready to sell in the mail, okay? You get it to your doorstep, and you can start selling it Three days, like, it'll be there three days after you get it. So you can start selling it right away. But better than that is you can sell it online immediately. And that's where the money really comes in, is you can start shipping it to people in a drop ship system where you never touch the CBD yourself. It just goes from the manufacturer straight to their doorstep right away. So the moment you do it, I mean, we it's, it's you know, afternoon, we can have it this afternoon, have you drop shipping it to everybody you know. Mm -hmm. And that's where the big money comes in. I got to say, I appreciate that because no one wants to, and not a lot of people have time to sit there and figure out how do I start from zero, like right. literally from seed, right. a viable CBD business. And and not that there's not value in it, mm -hmm. but for me, I know that most of us are already Buying working a job has value. or yeah. we're working, we're in another success path already. And we're trying mm -hmm. to say, how can I make some extra money? And how can I jump in on this CBD opportunity? And how can I make it work? Well, the first thing is you do is, like I said, you start the business. But you have to remember, you are the person that your friends will trust when it comes to CBD. So when they're getting it, they're going to know that you can tell them how much dosage they, sh they can take, mm -hmm. what they should take for each ailment. You'll be able to tell them what, what it tastes like, what it feels like, what it does. And that's the type of trust that people will buy from versus them buying it off the gas station counter and not knowing what to do with it, where to put it, how much to take. And that's where the businesses really start to grow. So mm -hmm. that's a huge aspect of it. And we have two things, real simple. You can retail it online or you can wholesale it. All right. So I can buy it and flip it or I can just sell it online to all my friends the way Amazon is making millions of dollars. Mm hmm. Let me ask you this because I've I've heard you go kind of deep in terms of some biology, some pharmacology, sure. some you know physiology <laughs> stuff. Um, what kind of training is provided for people that might be interested in just bypassing, you know, growing from seed? So who really want to? Yeah, so we train every week. So we have okay. uh, two audio trainings a week. Uh, we have a full website full of different training, like uh, like computer-based trainings that you can take. Mm -hmm. You can get yourself up to speed, and then we're live, so we work with people directly. It's not something where you signed up and you're a nobody. Nope, you sign up and you've got someone like myself to answer questions, guide you, and I call it quick-starting you in the right direction. So you go through a quick-start process mm -hmm. to really understand what's the next steps I need to do in order to make my business work and more for it to be profitable so I feel like I know what I'm doing. I can imagine your business has grown significantly. Listen. <laughs> with the Listen, CBD has given my business, to say new life would be almost an understatement. Okay. It's to the point where this is the first product in eight years of me doing business that more people call me than I call them. Huge. 
And if you're a business Huge. owner, mm-hmm. to have people find you, like right now I got a, a DM full of people, mm-hmm. hey, trying to get some CBD. Mm-hmm. I've got, you know, mm-hmm. text messages that I'll answer when I leave here mm-hmm. about CBD. That's a blessing. Mm-hmm. But you, when you're in business, though, you can't take that for granted. Mm-hmm. You can't get too up on yourself. You got to answer every phone mm-hmm. call, every DM, and treat that. everybody like they're your only customer. Mm-hmm. And that's the key to this whole deal. I got to go to break, it looks like. And this has been awesome. So yeah. I got you at Ultra Kurt. Yeah. That's easy enough on Instagram. So at Ultra Kurt, you can learn about everything. You can buy the CBD straight from my bio, but you can learn. If you go follow me, I'll show you how this business works. I do this every day and I show people every single day exactly how they can do it. So um, just follow me at Ultra Kurt. We'll have you come back. I'm going to be back and I'm going to be there on Black Diamond Weekend. I'm a diamond. I'm black. I got to be there. Well, it's going to be dope. (laughs) It's going to be dope. And you might win an award. (laughs) Listen, that'd be a a blessing, but, you know, more importantly, it's just kind of getting around and uh, I appreciate everything that you're doing. And we're watching. We're watching. All right? So, we'll get into that. So, we appreciate you. Hey, I'm not together, but hey. That's all good. Thank you for being on the show. Yes. I'm going to get chewed out. We got to go to break. We'll be We got to go. We got to (laughs) go. Back in just a moment. The biggest financial asset that you have going for you by miles is the value of your own earning power over the years. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. More important business insights are on the way. Stay locked in. Black Wall Street Today will be right back after these messages. Peace. I'm your brother, Crump. I have a new podcast called Snatched. Sorry. You're about to get snatched. It's the best of my YouTube channel, from TV. You're listening to the Snatch Podcast. In audio mastered format. Snatch and run! On Blueberry, Android, the Edgy Podcast, Stitcher, Digital Podcast, and Speaker. Ever experienced what snatching is like? And now, more Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham on Smooth 88.1 WHOV. Welcome back. Wow. Edition, thir- uh, edition 60, rather, has flown by. Um, super excited that we were finally able to have the CBD conversation. Many thanks to our resident expert, Mr. Kurt Anderson. You can, of course, find him on Instagram at UltraKurt. Whether you're looking for uh, more information about CBD, if you're looking to purchase a product, if you're looking to maybe um, get into perhaps starting a CBD business, um, you can get that information via his Instagram page again at UltraKurt. I also want to thank our Add This to the List guest, uh, Miss Allison Moore, the funniest um, comedian, Allison Moore. She's also available, comedian Allison Moore via Instagram and both of them will be joining us for Black Diamond Weekend so we're very excited to see them there Uh, so I think I got 30 seconds yes well I want to again say thank you for tuning in this week's episode will be available via our uh, podcast platform Uh, so you should see it there in the next 7 to 10 days thanks again for tuning in we're building minds we're building connections and we're forging the path ahead toward economic liberation in the black community we'll see you next week phenomenal stay with us online at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Black Wall Street Today on Instagram and then follow us on Twitter as well at BWS Today we look forward to talking again next week have a wonderful week I have said and I will continue to say that the most important priority for the black community is the black community, not a particular political party. Hey yo, when I say black, you say.